Hello everybody and welcome to this video about the Sony ZV-1 where we'll talk about the camera and how it works as a webcam and as a streaming device and how it can be used, what I think, in the proper way. If you're a frequent visitor to this channel you might realize that this is a little different from our usual topics but there is an API topic in here, see whether you can spot it. Why do I talk about the Sony? One of the things is that I was really tired with the quality of devices like this. This is a Logitech webcam. It's fine, but it's really not such a great camera. And I wanted to find something where I can have high quality video and it has an optical zoom and it just streams like a web camera. And what I found fascinating is that I couldn't find such a camera. There are webcams such as a Logitech and there are very good cameras, but none of them can just stream out of the box. So when I first looked at the Sony, it was marketed as a vlogger webcam type of camera, and it has pretty nice specs. It has a very good Vario Sonar type of lens in there. It's a, a large aperture. It has nice little zoom in there, not too much, but actually good for these kind of settings where you want just a kind of portrait range for how you can use the lens. And because it's a very fast lens, you also get a nice blur blurry background without having to do anything extra. So that's something that I found appealing. It also has a external microphone um, jack in there, so you can easily connect an external microphone. That's also good. So I'm recording this video actually with an external microphone. Oh, and I'm also, I am recording on the Sony. So I wanted to give you some idea of what the Sony produces as a webcam. So it's simply connected to my computer as a webcam and I'm recording this video through the regular streaming mode. Another thing I found appealing with the Sony was that it says that you can power supply it through the USB port, meaning that you can just use it for however long you wish because you're not running on battery. And generally speaking, Right? It was marketed as a vlogging streaming camera. Now, when I got it, and I agree, I should have probably researched better, but when I got it, I was disappointed to see that it's not really a webcam. So the typical thing happened saying, sure, you can connect it to your computer, but you need to install this Sony software. And as usual with that software, right, it's proprietary software, you don't really want to install it. It doesn't run on all operating systems. For example, it still is not available for Big Sur. And for me, it simply didn't work. I start the software. I saw the camera being displayed as an option, but I didn't get the camera image. And another thing is that if you go this way, you're using virtual cameras, meaning that at least on a Mac, not all programs can pick up those cameras. So even if it had worked, for example, in Microsoft Teams, you wouldn't be able to use it because Microsoft Teams does not support virtual cameras. Another disappointing thing, my first experience was that very clearly the USB power supply was not working, so the battery was draining. After a while, the camera just shut off because the battery was exhausted. Not great. In terms of hardware, it's not so bad. It's your typical Sony camera. It's a little bit more plasticky than the higher-end RX100 models, so it has more plastic to it. That's kind of okay with me. What I do find a little bit annoying is that the fold screen that you can fold out to the side, which is useful so that you can see yourself while you're filming, but it doesn't really fold out 180 degrees. It folds out maybe 175, so that seems like, why not make it 180? It just seems strange. But anyway, what's interesting to me is that when I went through all of this after buying the camera, I was a little bit annoyed with Sony marketing in that way. I was a little bit annoyed with me assuming it actually worked as a webcam. And I assumed it to work like a webcam because again, right, Logitech has made this possible for years and years and years now. You can just buy a Logitech camera, plug it into your computer and it works. You don't need to install any software. And the reason why it works is that there's a standard for it. It's an API, how the camera can talk to your computer, and it's part of pretty much all standard operating systems nowadays. It's called USB UVC, 
or USB video control. And it's a way how video signals are getting transmitted through USB. It's been around forever. It's a standard that was created in 2012. I was wondering why doesn't Sony simply implement that? And because I was frustrated, I sent a tweet on February 6 that said, I really think this camera is nice, but it should support USB UVC. And of course, I didn't really expect anything to happen. I just wanted to kind of, you know, vent a little bit, to be honest. But what's interesting, three days later, I saw a release with Sony releasing firmware version 2 for the ZV-1. So that was released on February 9th. Of course, complete coincidence, but it was kind of funny. And this firmware now supports USB UVC. So this is really, really nice. I went ahead and did it. So my camera now runs on firmware version two. It's the weirdest firmware upgrade process I've ever seen. I don't know how many confirmation windows and weird processes you have to go through, but it, it worked for me in the end. It just took a little reading instructions, following them, and then it works. And what you're seeing now is exactly this image of the camera working through USB UVC with the computer and I'm just recording on my computer with regular QuickTime, it's a Mac, and what you can record is up to 1280 by 720, which is nice HD resolution. Plus, you get the nice optical quality of a good camera. I think that is really the main point here, that the usual webcams just optically are not great. They only have digital zooms and having good lens, fast lens, and optical zoom makes, for me, makes all the difference. So in the end, what we have now is we have a good camera, the Sony ZV-1, which is really working as a plug and play webcam. You can walk up with this to any computer, plug it in, and it will show up as a webcam. That also means that you can use it in all apps because it's not one of these strange virtual cameras, at least on the Mac, that's how some of these works. So it's a proper webcam and you can use it in Teams and Zoom and WebEx and Skype and web-based applications anywhere. QuickTime, right now I'm recording in QuickTime. So it's really something that I think is very nice if you want to stream, if you want to use a webcam that just has a noticeably nicer image quality. In my mind, what this could really start, I find that interesting was I was looking for this kind of camera and initially when I bought it, it was not the kind of camera that I wanted to buy, like an actual webcam that is streaming through USB without any additional software. But now it does that. So that's really nice. I think it is the first camera on the market that does that. A good camera that works as a standard webcam. And I'm really wondering why no other manufacturer has come up with this so far. It's really surprising. I have no idea why nobody is doing it. I think it's something where Sony actually could get quite a bit of mileage out of the camera by marketing it in that way and saying nobody else is doing it. If you just want to have great quality zoom calls, buy a ZV-1, plug it into your cube, a computer and off you go. No software required. I think that's a pretty nice value proposition that you can make. So to some extent, I can say my mission of having a high quality and simple setup now has been accomplished. I can connect the camera to my computer without any additional hardware. I don't need any additional software. Wonderful. The two things that I think still need to be fixed are maybe minor gripes, but one of them is a little bit more major. So the first one, the really minor one in my mind is that in order to start streaming, you need to disconnect the cable. So if you plug in the camera and then you want to start streaming, the camera tells you with a message on the screen, first disconnect the cable and then start streaming and then connect the cable, which is just very strange and counterintuitive to me. So I think that is something that hopefully can be fixed in an upcoming version of the firmware. It just seems like a strange thing that if I have a webcam that I can't just leave it connected to my computer, I always have to go through the plug-in, plug-out dance because every time I want to turn the camera on, 
it requires me to disconnect it before I can start streaming. So that's the minor thing. The major thing that I still find rather annoying is that the USB power supply still doesn't work. So even if you have the USB cable connected and there is a power supply going to the camera, for some reason it still uses up battery and after some hours, it, it does take a while, but after some hours it will just shut down. You will just see a message on the screen, battery exhausted, the camera turns off. And if you're in the middle of a call or something, that is really not what you want to happen. So I think this is really something that could be improved. And I hope it's something that could be improved through a firmware update. So that's it. That's all that I wanted to talk about. Just talk a little bit about the camera, talk how I found something that I think is really much better than like these, these kind of webcams, the Logitech ones. Good image quality. All you need is probably a tripod where you can put it up a little bit higher also that you get a nice angle. So I have it put up on, at, at eye level. And then you can really do video calls in a much better quality. The camera isn't really cheap. It's around 600 bucks. So it's not the cheapest camera to buy, but it's a good camera. It has good lens. It has fast lens. It has optical zoom. It has high quality streaming now up to good HD quality. So I think that really is something that makes it unique. Maybe we'll see more cameras in this space popping up. But for now, I think the Sony ZV-1 really is one of a kind in that sector. It still has its quirks. But remember, if you're getting it, make sure to upgrade to firmware 2.0 or you won't get any of this and you will need to install the Sony software, which trust me, you really don't want to install. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and see you soon.